Hi guys, welcome to today's GS tutorial. In this video, we'll learn about elevation profiles. You can subscribe to this channel to follow all my previous useful GS tips and tutorials. For those who are interested in taking up a complete course from basic to advanced GIS, you can register at WestGIS by following this link. You can also join our Patreon. I'll provide all the useful links in the description below. An elevation profile is a depiction of a two-dimensional cross-section view of a landscape. It provides a side view of a terrain elevation along a line drawn between locations on a map. An example of this is this uh, cross-section that I did for Mount Kilimanjaro. And we're going to do a similar cross-section for a region anywhere in, your, in the world. In this lesson, we'll explore two methods you can use. One is by using the QGIS software and two by using Google Earth Pro. So let's start today's exercise. We're going to open up QGIS and create a new blank project. Now, the data that we need in this exercise is um, elevation data. It might be a raster layer or some just point data that have elevation values. So I'm going to look for some DEM data or a region. So I'm going to open my browser. In this case, I'm going to be using Google Chrome. And in my browser, I'm going to search for opentopography.org. Then I'm going to select the data tab and data catalog. Then I'm going to go to the global data so that I can actually access some free DM data. And I'm going to look for the SRTM data and I'm going to download the SRTM GL1, which is 30 meter resolution SRTM data. So I'm going to scroll down. and I'm now going to go through the process of getting this data. To get this data, I'm going to select a region in the world. So I'm just going to zoom into an area that I want to get the data of. I'm going to pan around and zoom. And I've gotten the area that I want to get my data from around this region in Mount Kenya. So I'm going to select my, my data by drawing a box around the area I want to get the DM of. Then I'm going to go to the next step. And you can see the area is approximately 600 kilometers. So I'm going to go to the next, and I want it to be a geotiff. I'm going to uncheck generate hill sheds because I just want it to be very, very simple. Then I'm going to just put my job description as GIS. And I'm going to put my job description as GIS. And hit on submit. It's actually querying my data. And you can see after querying my data, I have a RASA, I have a .tar file. So I'm going to download this, which is 7.5 MB. I'm going to save it in my work folder, DM data, the DM folder, and I'm going to call it Mount Kenya data. I'm going to save it there. I'm going to open the folder and I'm going to unzip. And now I have my T file unzipped. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to QGIS and in QGIS I'm going to load a RASA layer. So to load a RASA layer, I'm going to go to layer, add layer, add RASA layer. And I'm going to browse for where my RASA layer is. And I have this output here that is downloaded. So I'm going to click on open and I'm going to click on add and close. Now we have already added our data in QGIS. After loading this raster layer, I'm going to apply some styles to this layer. So I'm going to duplicate this layer so that I have two layers. So I'm going to create a duplicate of the same layer. Then in the first layer, I'm going to just style it using uh, different colors. So I'm going to right click on the layer, go to properties. Then instead of a single band grid scale, I'm going to say single band pseudo color. Then I'm going to select a color ramp. I'm going to create new color ramp. And I'm going to use the catalog city PTCTs. And I'm going to look 
because since we are dealing with topography, I'm going to select topography, and then I'm going to use the elevation topography. So I'm going to use that that topography. Then I'm going to click on classify, apply OK, and now I have a visual representation of my raster layer. Now I'm going to uncheck the top layer that I've just symbolized. Then I'm going to check the copy, and this copy I'm going to actually generate a hill shade of it. So I'm going to go to properties, then Symbology instead of a single band grayscale, I'm going to say here shade. Then I'm going to just say the Z factor to be 10. Then I'm going to say apply. Okay, now I have the the hill shade, and so I'm going to now check back the initial layer, and then I'm going to apply some transparency on this layer so that you can actually see a very nice visual representation of this uh, data. So I'm going to go to properties again. I'm going to go to transparency and I'm going to reduce the transparency to say 50%. Then apply OK. And now we have a very nice visual representation of our data. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to install a plugin that is going to aid us into getting this elevation profile. So I'm going to go to the plugin manager, manager install plugins. And it's fetching the repositories. Then I'm going to look for under all. I'm going to look for the profile, the profile tool. So we're going to install a plugin called the profile tool. I'm going to click on install. The plugin has been installed successfully. So I'm going to close this uh, window here. The plugin is under the plugin tab. So I'm going to select plugin. And you can see we have the profile tool. It also appears on your toolbar somewhere. You can see we also have the profile terrain profile tool. So I'm going to go to the plugin manager profile tool. Then I'm going to select terrain profile. And you can see it actually appears below the map view. So uh, this is uh, actually the interface of the profile tool. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add this layer into the profile tool. So you're going to click on add layer. And it will add the output SRTM. Which is the which adopts a red color. If you want to change the color from red to any other color, you can just change it by clicking on this color here and selecting whichever color you like. So I can select blue, and the profile that will be drawn will have a blue color. You can add as many layers as possible here, but because we're only working with one layer, we're going to just only add one layer. So the next thing you want to do is you're going you want to go to the options. And under the options, you have three actually three options. There's a temporary pole line that you can actually draw, or you can just be having some shape files by selecting the layers that you have in your in display, or you can just have a selected pole line. So we're going to, for, for this exercise, we're just going to be using the, a temporary pole line. So I'm going to draw a line that I want to view a profile of. I'm going to start from here, then the line is going to cross through this region here. I'm just going to draw a straight line. You can actually draw a line the way you want, like it can be zigzag if you want. But I'm just going to draw a straight line. Then we reach the end of uh, your desired line. Just double click. And it actually now draws your profile here. When I'm moving from one side of the profile to the other side, it actually highlights the region that I'm working in. And you can see the highest point of my profile is around 400 meters from the graph that you can see here. And you can see this uh, region here is where it actually, the elevation goes up a bit and then go down. So actually you can now see the direction of the slope of this area generally. And with these, you can actually do so many things. You can actually decide to save this as a PNG and put it in your report or let me just expand it a bit. And you can see the maximum value is 4,800 uh, meters, and the minimum value is 420 meters. So uh, you can draw as many profiles as you want. I can draw another one here and just let it pass through that and go back this way. 
And then when I reach the end, I double click. I have my profile and you can actually see this is how my profile looks like. I'm actually going to draw another profile of the same area. So I'm going to zoom in into my area. And then I'm going to just draw another cross section. Maybe start from here, then end here by double clicking. And now I have my profile. So this is the, the data that we want to actually get from, from my area. So how can we get these data from our area? You can actually go to the table tab. Under the table tab, you can actually see now some values. So how can you get these values into maybe your report or maybe as a layer? So there are actually several ways you can actually do that. You can actually decide to copy it on a clipboard and this option gives you an opportunity to copy them, including the coordinates. So I'm going to click on copy on clipboard. Then I'm going to open an Excel file. Then I'm going to paste all these values and you can actually see now we have the points, the X and the Y coordinate and including the elevation values. So you can actually use this data to bring it back as a PSD layer into a GIS environment. Then another way you can actually do that is by clicking on create temporary layer. So I can click on create temporary layer and actually create some very, very many points. Let me just zoom in so that you can actually see. It actually creates so many, very, many tiny points. And it is also added as a temporary layer on your in your project. So when I open the attribute table, I can actually now see it has the uh, elevation values of the different points within my work area. So this is very useful because you can actually now be able to save this data and put it in my GPS and and uh, use it in any other kind of analysis that you want to do. So you need to what you need to do is you need to actually right click on the layer and make it permanent and save it as any file that you like. So I'm going to save it as an SD share file and I'm going to save it in my work folder, my test folder, I'm going to call it profile, profile points, and it's an SD share file. So I'm going to click on save, and I'm going to click on OK. And now it is saved in my folder. I can bring it as a as a layer now. And I'll be able to do any analysis with these kind of data. Another useful functionality of the profile tool is like you can, you can actually import uh, the PNG, this PNG of uh, the cross section into your report. So how do we do that? You can actually import it by saving it as a PNG or you can save it as, a, as, as an SVG, a 3D line DXF or a 2D profile DXF for your AutoCAD software. So I'm going to save it as a PNG, but before I save it as a PNG, I need to remove this cursor by making sure that I don't show any cursor. Then I'm going to click on save us. I can say PT, PT1. I'm going to click on save. I'm going to have saved it in my, in my desktop. So I'm going to access my desktop and look for PT1. And when I open it, I have my nice graph that I can actually include now in my report. That is how useful this uh, profile tool is. And you can just play around with it to look at the different uh, settings that you can actually use to make your profile and the information that you get much better. Now we can go to the next uh, software, which is uh, how can we do the same in Google Earth Pro. In Google Earth Pro, it's actually quite a uh, very straightforward exercise. So I'm just going to zoom in into my region where I want to get a profile. So I'm going to zoom in into fairly the same region that I was working in in QGIS. So I want to get maybe say a profile of this area and it, and it can be a road or a hiking route or anything linear in nature. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a path. To be able to create a path in Google Earth, I'm going to just come to the add path. Then I'm going to add a path. 
So I'm assuming this is the path that we're going to be following, or the one that we want to get the cross section of. I put say there. Then I'm going to call this my profile. I can change the style of the color to maybe say red. And I can also change the width to be a bit bigger to maybe say two. And I can add as many information as I want here, but this is enough. Then I'm going to click on OK. And now you can see I have a path of where I want to get the profile of. To be able to get the profile of this path, I can just go to the layer, right click on the layer, and then go to show elevation profile. And when I select show elevation profile, you can actually see now we have a very, very beautiful elevation profile just below. So when you move and you move from one point to the other, you can actually see it also, there's also an arrow that shows where you are in your profile. So this is the highest point, and you can see that you can just go, this is how the area is sloping. And this got to show you that this is the, the correct profile of Mount Kenya. So to be able to save this profile, what you need to do is you just need to use the snip tool, and you can actually just uh, create a new snip, and you snip these section the way it is and save it for use in your report so i'm going to call it pt2 it's a png file i'm going to save and now i can access it from my desktop this is pt2 and you can be able to add it anywhere in your report to just show the profile of what you are working with so that's how you generate elevation profiles in QGIS and in Google Earth Pro. That's it for today's exercise. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more on GIS, you can subscribe to my channel or you can register with Voice GIS so that you can be able to learn more from basic to advanced GIS. Otherwise, I'm happy you're here. See you in my next video.